Hey everyone, this video is going to be my picks, my personal picks based on my personal taste to some, I would say more unique uh, watercolors shades or colors. So first of all, hey, if you're new here, my name is Irit. I would call myself a mixed media artist and memory keeper, aka scrapbooker. I post regular weekly videos. I try to upload more than uh, one a week. And yeah, I haven't done one of these more watercolors, recommendation, art supplies type of videos in a long time been really busy with all kinds of things so but yeah I thought this would be a fun video to make um, I would say this is geared towards people who are looking to create their own custom palette if you are a complete beginner new to watercolors I would probably say the easiest thing to do is buy a set that you know most sets um, if you go with a good company you get a good variety of shades, you get a few primary colors, and then you can basically mix every, in theory, most other shades in the uh, color wheel. And color theory is really, really important, and, you know, color mixing is, I would say, an essential skill to have, especially if you want to, you know, make the most out of your supplies. However, I personally am always in the search of those certain shades and my personal um, color palette, color preferences, I definitely gravitate toward the more tertiary colors in the color wheel. So, you know, the primary colors are yellow, magenta, red, and blue. And then you have the secondary colors, orange, green, and purple. And then the tertiary colors are those in between. and that's where I usually go to. So, of course, you could mix those colors, but first of all, there are so, so many beautiful, gorgeous watercolors that are already either mixed for you or they use um, pigments in these colors. So I like to have a selection of those shades in my palette because I don't want to mix my perfect violet or my perfect turquoise or my perfect mint color every single time I paint. So I have done, I went through my um, obsession <laughs> stage of <laughs> searching for those perfect shades. At the moment I mostly use um, this palette. So the tin is, um, it's just a standard, um, you know, metal tin. You can find these in every art store. They come empty, but they're usually black. Mine is a gorgeous, a gorgeous, a gorgeous turquoise color, and this was um, a discontinued uh, watercolor set by Vicky Butin. But you can't get this anymore. So I'm sorry. This is you could spray paint, like buy a black one and spray paint it. I love it. It's so pretty. It's very similar in color to the small Jane Davenport set, but this holds obviously more watercolor. So this is the set that I currently use and you can see it's very, very well loved. And that's, this has like, you know, every color here was handpicked by moi, of course. And this is like my color aesthetics. You can see very, very low on neutrals. Do I even have neutrals here? No, I don't have. I have like a separate palette um, that I do have some of my favorite neutrals, but honestly, I hardly ever reach for it. If I need a neutral, and I do use a lot of, like, not a lot, but I do use uh, grays sometimes in my work, I mix it myself from these guys. So this is my palette, and this has a lot of the shades that I want to recommend to you. So I'm going to divide it to kind of color groups, so yellows, then pinks and violets, and then uh, turquoises and greens. I will put timestamps below so you don't have to watch the whole thing if you're not uh, interested in everything. And I will also put a list with links to all of the supplies that I mentioned. Hopefully, I think everything should be available. And probably most of those links are affiliate links, so just be aware if you use them and you shop, it doesn't cost you more, I will get a small commission and that 
is lovely for me and I would really appreciate it uh, if you um, yeah if you if you use those links so just um, to be clear another thing I haven't tried all the watercolors of all the brands um, I guess I never will and so these are from the ones that I've chose like explored and experimented with and the ones I've had I have and found these are my favorites. I'm sure there are many, many other ones. So if I don't mention your favorite violet color or something like that, don't be offended. Um, I just can't possibly try everything. If you want to see all the watercolors in the world, <laughs> I think you can find them on the Jane Blundell, Blundell, I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly, website. That is a fantastic and very, very dangerous um, reference site that I have used and you know got lost there and may have ended up uh, shopping <laughs> and she has swatches of pretty much every known brand and most of the colors in those brands um, if you do want to try like every color in a brand by yourself then some brands hopefully one day every brand will offer offer this because i think you know you just can't go wrong with this there are such things as dot cards so these are just cards with little dots of watercolor paint that is of course dried and this one is one of the uh, daniel smith um color chart or a dot card so it looks like this and this is amazing so you can buy this, it does cost money, I think this one costs like 20 euros, which is not at all cheap, but on the other hand, you get to try all the colors, they can probably uh, also, you know, you can use them on your painting and see how they actually perform and not just color swatch them, because for the most part these um, little dots contain a decent amount of paint, and you can see for yourself how every color looks, and you know if you're if you use a lot of watercolor and if you invest in the tubes they're expensive and you know it's much better to spend like 20 euros or 20 dollars or however much this costs and then you can at least make sure that you buy all the colors that you really really love so um daniel smith has these dot cards schminke also has a dot card and I think Holbein has also one which I haven't been able to get and I'm kind of okay with it because I have enough watercolors to last me several oh. lifetimes. But I will show you now some of my favorite colors. And another thing that I want to say is that as I've said, these recommendations are going to focus on those colors that are not the primary colors that you can find from every company in every set because First of all, I don't think, you know, they're not really special. You don't have to go hunt for them in this brand or the other. I think when it comes to the top brands in watercolors, and to me, there are many, but to me, it's um, the, the caliber that I'm talking about is Schminke, Daniel Smith, uh, Sennelier are also a favorite of mine. The M. Grams paints, I'm in Europe, so M. Gram is mostly more available in the U.S., um, the ones that I've tried are amazing. Core, you know, the golden brand, fantastic. And then you have like Windsor & Newton. I'm just looking at some of the paints that I have. Um, all these are, you know, artist grade, top of the line. It really, it really comes down to personal preference and what you like um, your watercolor to be, all kinds of different characteristics. but. You know, between Ultramarine, the Schminke Ultramarine, and the Daniel Smith Ultramarine, and the Windsor & Newton Ultramarine, yes, there are some small variations, but it's it's not so hard to find a good Ultramarine that, you know, that you really use. So I'm going to focus on more of those uh, special shades, kind of convenient colors, or colors that are a little bit more unique and are not, um, not every brand has them and I personally love and use all the time. And okay, so as I said, I'm gonna start with the yellows and oranges, and I don't have a ton. Um, I actually like my favorite uh, 
yellows to use are the really warmer ones the ones that are more you know reddish or orange i don't do i don't use a lot of like lemony yellows and so i just want to show you like this this is a really uh lovely color it's one of the newer daniel smith uh colors that came out last year and it's the aussie red gold and this is how my bad swatch looks like so i hope you know with um with watercolors it really the camera can kind of mess up um the colors it doesn't look exactly like that, it does so but, this yeah one. so uh aussie red gold is a mixture of three pigments and it's just a really 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 beautiful like golden golden very yellowish um almost like an a bit out of an earthy tone uh yellow so as for oranges i have two that i think are kind of unique as i said i haven't tried every color from every brand but those are um kind of unique in my collection and you know i have quite a few sets that i bought so i haven't found in those sets even the large sets like the white knights um 36 color set or things like what are they called the mission gold or something like that even the large sets i still find these colors to be quite unique so actually they're both from sennelier sennelier has really gorgeous watercolors and i will mention another one later in this video that is really really unique so the ones i want to talk about are the um the Sennelier Rose Dore Matter Lake. Sorry if I'm butchering that name. And this is a beautiful color. It is kind of... Um, yeah, I wouldn't even know how to <laughs> describe this color. It's somewhere between um, a red, an orange, and a pink. Somewhere in that realm. It's beautiful. It's transparent. It's one pigment. Um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful color. And I love it. I think if you water it down, you know, you can also use it for uh, portraits or like even a cheek color or something like that because it's just beautiful. Watered down, it's kind of a very light, peachy, pinky color. Beautiful and transparent. So I love that color. And the other one that I don't have in a tube, I just have it in a pan uh, that I kind of took out and put here. Uh, this is a part of my Robux uh, palette. And if you're not familiar with her palettes, they're amazing. So you can get them on kind of a Lazy Susan thing in different sizes and I'll leave a link. That's not an affiliate link. I have no connection to the company besides being a very, very, very happy customer. So this is an insert that goes in another palette. And yeah, so here I have the Sennelier orange and it's just, I don't know, to me it's like a very unique uh, orange. It doesn't look at all like it does now on the screen. Um, it's a lot on the screen. It looks kind of like a bright uh, orange. But in reality, it's a lot more, uh, I don't know, reddish, pinkish, very, very unique color. Um, just try it for yourself. I don't know, I'll try to maybe fix the color, um, you know, the color balance or color correction on the screen because I think it's such a unique color and it's not at all what you see on the screen. It's a lot um, kind of salmon salmon sorry don't pronounce the l i don't know why <laughs> salmon color i guess i don't know also single pigment and this one is um half semi semi transparent or semi opaque so i want to move on to the fluorescent pinks so you probably know that fluorescent colors don't translate um in the camera they just also in photos so you might be familiar with the daniel smith um opera uh color which is super 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 popular and if you want this color on steroids then i suggest that you get i'm trying to just that you know the i mean look what 
light and camera <laughs> does to these colors so I'm trying to face them away so if you want the Daniel Smith opera on steroids then I suggest trying the Shinhan Pass um, color in opera that's how it looks now Shinhan Pass um, pa pass <laughs> pass these are their hybrid colors and they are supposed to be I think I have a separate video about those so I'll link that um, they are supposed to be yeah it says hybrid of watercolor and gouache depending on how uh, thick you apply them these are I don't like all the colors I don't have all the colors but I do have a selection of these because I really wanted to try them because they are so so affordable these are made in Korea they are you know they come in these large tubes 20 uh, milliliter tubes and they are ridiculously cheap for what you get and a few of the shades I would say are like a couple of them are quite unique um, I do recommend these especially if you're on a budget and as I said not I don't think all the colors are as um, you know great uh, when compared to like other brands but what a great option so if you want the super super fluorescent like one of those light fluorescent bright pinks and you don't want to spend money on the Daniel Smith opera one or you want something that is you know even more fluorescent the Shinhan that's how it looks uh, Shinhan opera fantastic to them Super. so this is the type of pink that I'm talking about um, I know on camera it looks very very similar to these but these are like you know super crazy fluorescent bright um, this I think actually looks good on on camera um, so this is my favorite type of pink my favorite shade of pink to use in my work it's it's very um, on the purpley side I would say and I just love these colors and I would say that the four of these are quite similar and I don't really mind you know if I run out of tube of one of those I'll just move on to the next one and I, I don't feel the need to repurchase because they are so similar so I'll show you the colors this one is probably the least um, like vibrant one and that's the Sennelier uh, what's it called Opera Rose beautiful beautiful color I think all of these are fugitive colors that are not color fast um, this is the Opera Rose from Sennelier beautiful color probably my least favorite of this group as I said the differences are very very small but I feel like the other ones are a little bit more alive so Probably my favorite is the Holbein Bright Rose. I just love this color. It's such a gorgeous um, color. And I think with the other pinks that you usually find in sets, um, you can find a lot of like similar ones. I like the all the quinacridones from Daniel Smith. They are fantastic. I think the rose one is probably my favorite. Quinacridone Rose, super popular. And you can find similar shades to that in every brand but these I find are not so easy to find I'm not sure I think Daniel Smith actually doesn't have something that is really on the dot I maybe I need to go try some of the newer pinks that they came out with but definitely my favorite is the Holbein Bright Rose and if you don't want to spend the money on the Holbein brand a dupe a cheaper dupe to that would be the Professional Watercolors by Shinhan so these are those next to each other and also called bright rose um, and then the one that I actually have in my palette and probably easiest to get if you're in Europe is the Schminke brilliant purple it's one of their best colors I just love it again it's the same type of like this purpley very very bright pink and that's the one I have in my palette. The tube looks like this. And um, beautiful color like the others. So another um, favorite that I want to show you, and this is like not at all bright, but I think it's quite a special color. 
I don't use it a lot, but it's so pretty. I should just put it in my palette and then I'm sure I will use it more. So this is by M. Graham and this is called Ultramarine Pink. And it's kind of a more like a, a really purplish, muted, um, very granulating, you can see, hopefully, camera. So you can see the granulation. Um, it's just, yeah, like a violet, muted violet color. Um, this is how it looks. It's kind of, you know, it's quite an investment, but such a tube will last you a lifetime, <laughs> seriously. So I think this is the only M. Graham paint that I have in my uh, recommendations. They are beautiful. I have quite a few of those. And I think I bought from Amazon the Cobalt uh, package and then the Ultramarine Pink as an extra because I really wanted that color. And they are gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous paints to work with. I know they are like some artists' absolute favorite and I can understand that. Um, but I haven't seen like from the other colors from the research that I've done online and you know looking for swatches I haven't found colors that are so unique. What I would like to try one day is their um, neutral tint because it doesn't have black in it and I would really like to try that one day but ultramarine pink I think Daniel Smith has something similar to that but from the dot card I'm not sure. It has ultramarine. Yeah, the, I would say this is somewhere between the ultramarine red and the cobalt violet from Daniel Smith. But both of those, the cobalt violet, I think I would only use it fresh from the tube because it rewets horribly, in my opinion. And that's like one of my favorite colors um, from Daniel Smith, the cobalt violet. But I don't buy it because it, you can, I have a little. Um, I, I tried to buy a pan. There is the seller on Etsy that they sell Daniel Smith pans. So I bought this color because it's one of my favorites and it's just, I can't use it. You get so little color even when you really work hard to re-wet it. So it's not a good one to me uh, because I don't use fresh paint from the tube. And yeah, so this one is a little bit more bluish than the cobalt violet and it's a little bit more pinkish than the ultramarine red from Daniel Smith. Um, it's a gorgeous color and it rewets lovely and yeah, M. Graham. If this is the type of color that interests you, check it out. It's beautiful.